right good evening ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to exchange for media presents uh, webinar this e webinar is powered by mylin ladies and gentlemen mylin foundry and i would like to welcome all of you this afternoon for this very interesting and the need of the hour panel discussion now before we go on to introduce you to the panelists and our session chair i'd like to remind all of you that we are live on our facebook page and other social media platforms as well we encourage you to ask questions so please send in your questions to us so that we can address them during or in the end of the discussion now you can use our hashtag which is e4m webinar e numerical 4 webinar and also you can tweet to us using our tag at e again numerical 4m tweets so it is e4m tweets where you can send us your tweets today now uh, talking about today's session ladies and gentlemen it is a topic that we all would definitely uh, you know would like to know about because we are using the ott platform so much during this quarantine time now how is it going to transform itself and what are the new technology or avenues that it is going to see and that is exactly what our panelists and our session chair is going to discuss today so let me now quickly tell you what our uh, topic of this discussion is it's transforming viewer experience on ott using artificial intelligence and i'd like to introduce and welcome our panelists on this uh, e webinar ladies and gentlemen please uh, join me in welcoming dr gopichan katragada founder and ceo mylin foundry very warm welcome sir thank you thank you i'd also like to welcome our panelist lokesh chauhan chief technology officer eros now warm welcome to you sir let us now welcome from uk mike card the former chief science officer for british telecom and also served as the president of the institution of engineering technology mike has several patents to his name in the field of video compressing warm welcome to you to mike hi thank you for joining us i'd also like to welcome our panelist manish verma head of technology sony live warm welcome sir and our panelist shahabuddin sheikh chief technology officer alt balaji warm welcome to you sir and ladies and gentlemen i'd now like to uh, welcome our session chair for this particular panel discussion mr prashant rao partner telecom media and technology deloitte a very warm welcome to you too, sir mm -hmm. i would uh, like you to now take the discussion forward thank you thanks yati for the warm introduction and uh, bringing all together on this platform so in fact uh, i'm i'm very happy to talk about this uh, very interesting topic about ott at this point of time and then get to hear from all the learned gentlemen on the call about what what are the things that's in store for us in the future okay now uh, as we move, move along this uh, the mood being covid at this point of time we saw Ms. Uh, prime minister modi coming online and saying this is card that is card lockdown you need to stay indoors you cannot go to your offices just imagine amongst all of this if he said no ott no internet what would life would have been uh, how much of our uh, things that we are doing at this point of time would have changed so with that uh, light note just moving on to this topic on how technology can influence the viewer experience in the ott sector uh, see just broadly if you look into it there is a 87% tele density in india uh, in terms of in, uh, penetration of uh, telecommunications then as you move along and compensate with it uh what do you say uh, about 1.1 billion customers were having sim cards of which 400 of them being smartphones and then now more and more houses are getting smart televisions there are devices which can make your dumb terminal a smart televisions as well like a smart small streaming stick so the multiple of these things are giving a push towards uh, ott's success so as we see right now there may be about 35 to 40 large ott companies which are currently operating in india catering to the demands of the customer there may be about uh, give and take 50 million odd customers who are currently looking into it that means we are at the start of a big revolution and a change and then uh, what we need to achieve is the entire population of of india going towards this so uh, about 3 and 1/2 hours of consumption is what we see on a daily basis so what's one other unique factor in this scenario is 
the ott uh, consumption also leaves behind the trail you know who is consuming what time it's being consumed what is being consumed and various things about you your gender your uh, uh, what do you say demography etc so how is all of this being used to give you better experience so let's dwell into this and get to some of our speakers to understand how what's happening in this area and what's being done so uh, quickly to jump on to this maybe uh, i'll just uh, throw open a very broad question to to mr gopi to say how can maybe user experience uh, help otts to make them stand apart from the rest and then attract more and more customers towards them so maybe gopi can take it so uh, prashant thanks for the question and if it's okay with you i'll take it a little broader before uh, diving deeper um so it's a fantastic uh, juncture that we are at uh, and it's a great time uh, to be a person who is interested in creativity who is interested in technology uh, because they have come together like never before uh, creativity has been democratized in many ways uh, and technology is making a lot of things happen so today's conversation i'm looking forward to hearing from everyone in terms of how they are viewing uh, this uh, intersection uh because there's so much happening so the way i would like to uh, share my thoughts is that uh, there is a journey of a story uh, in uh, many of these ott broadcasts and that story could be video on demand it could be a television serial or a movie uh, it could be sports which is also a story uh, it could be news uh, it could be uh, gaming these are all things which are fair game when it comes to viewer experience uh, there is a journey of a user the user uh, and his journey between content as well as within the content so we'll come back to each one of that and then there is a journey of a pixel or an audio byte from where uh, it is created all the way to where it is uh, consumed so each one of these uh, are impacted and uh, impacted in a favorable way uh, in terms of how content is being consumed uh, um, and uh, being enjoyed so let's come back to the journey of the uh, story and the creative agile multi gen uh, needs uh, which are now being expressed um, so what is happening here uh, so if you look at uh, ai which is one of the focus areas for us uh, today uh, it is uh, looking at the ability to do plot generation previously if you want to create a, a story you had to do it entirely uh, as a creative output of an individual even today uh, i believe that an individual cannot be re removed from a creative activity uh, however he can be made more creative and be given lot more inputs in his journey as a creative person uh, so there are branching narratives which are possible today you watch that in a few of the global channels and it was a very much a starting po starting point but ai can make these branching narratives much more meaningful uh, beyond plots you can have story generators you can have short recommendations for a particular scene you can have an action being followed in case of sports you can have a ball being uh, followed in case of cricket or soccer you can create news by compiling news from various things which are happening around so these are on one side on the uh, content as a media itself you can democratize vfx so you have seen uh, user generated content in various uh, uh, methods uh, where really what's happening is uh, the vfx uh, which was only available to large media homes is available to everyone on their mobile phones using ai you can modernize content content every 3 years is, is being outpaced by the display capabilities right Uh, so and you can generate uh, content as well you can generate trailers uh, based on a large volume of a movie for example or otherwise put together a brief of news and so on so forth now the journey of the user the need there is precise timely interactive uh, content um and this is exactly what is made possible uh, by ai so recommendation engines uh, make uh, precise content available at the right time you can have video x rays which are ai based which are not manually tagged so you can actually have uh, an ability to look at what is happening on the uh, screen who is there but who, also whose voice is playing the music in the background but also what are they wearing what are they carrying can i buy it somewhere right so many things are possible in terms of the journey of the user uh, and then in terms of the journey of the pixel the story is about 
efficiency and quality uh, so buffering today you got buffered on my screen uh, just as you were speaking maybe not the same for everyone you just got stuck and your voice disappeared uh, it doesn't have to happen uh, because today i can transmit a very small size fly, file at lightning speed and only use the edge device to get the right uh, quality uh, what is the quality resolution zero buffering dynamic range removing noise removing artifacts and uh, ai is a tool and it should be looked upon as like uh, as a tool uh, and um, it is hence one amongst the set of tools which should be looked at at a later point i'm happy to discuss as to how ai will do all of this but i just wanted to give you that flavor of the journey of a story journey of a user and journey of the pixel all of which are impacted by technology in this beautiful way thanks thanks gobi for wonderfully putting across all three journeys on that side so as as people go through this journey as as various uh, experiences are are uh, taken through this obviously there are certain challenges that come across uh, one such similar challenge that we noticed recently was uh, uh, the massive load on bandwidth that we, all of concurrent users started using it and then there was that put in a, quite a bit of load on our telecom networks so there was a direction that is given by our government to say you know what we need So we will have to accordingly uh, change their uh, uh, standards and then accordingly cater to the uh, user environment based on as is where is. So maybe uh, it's right time to take a question on what what kind of challenges uh, are OTT uh, broadcasting goes through, and then what are the some of things that we are doing to overcome them? So maybe Mike, can you take a stab at this uh, challenges uh, part of it? Yeah, certainly. I, I, I always look at things um, from my sort of pre previous expertise, which is around the, uh, image coding and image compression. Um, I worked very actively from the from the late seventies through to the two thousands on image compression algorithms, and uh, it, uh, it's really interesting. At, at, at the time we started started doing the work, the the problem was. Uh, always challenged in the sense that everybody expected large bandwidths to be available. So people working on fiber optics and we were working on image compression. And people said that, you know, was it really an interesting research activity because image compression isn't going to be needed because we've got so much bandwidth. And actually, if you actually look what's happened over the past 20, 30 years, we're still being challenged by image compression and the difficulties of doing that because the, the sheer volume of traffic which is on which is on the uh, internet and uh, the, the load that it creates, something like a third of all of the load on the internet is, is internet streaming. Um, and so uh, the costs of consequence of that are, are, are relatively high. And of course, there's been a whole series of coding algorithms that have been created over the time. You know, I worked very actively on H.261 in the 90s. Uh, that became uh, the, the basis for MPEG-2. And, you know, MPEG-2 could achieve, what, an HD picture in interlaced form, 1080i, probably around 40 megabits per second at that time. And that was considered to be a real achievement. And over a, what, a five year, 10 year period, as the compression algorithms have got better in terms of the implementation of MPEG-2, MPEG-2 itself didn't change, but the compute power available in order to do the compression increased. And you know we can now using MPEG-2 probably get the same picture down something like 15 megabits per second, something like that. And then of course everybody came up with H.264, which we, which 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 which, which pe people know, and that, and that gave another step change from something like 15 megabits for the same picture down to something like eight or nine megabits. And now we've got you know HEVC H.265, which could probably fit the same picture down. Um, uh, 1080 i picture down something like five megabits per second but but it is bottoming out you use it using using that uh, that that uh, uh, that technology and one of the things that isn't talked about very much is the difference between real-time content like um, uh, watching sports or interacting with people and and movies um, movies when you look at how the coding's done the, the, the coder will typically code the the picture once look at the places that didn't code very well recode them using a slightly different set of parameters in the coding scheme 
until they get an optimum um, uh, quality across the whole of the uh, across the whole of the content. And as long as the average file size for a movie is around two gigabits per second, they don't worry because they download it in non real time. You buffer for a few minutes, and then you watch the movie, and it all looks in good quality. And the average bit rate maybe five or 10 megabits per second um, uh, 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 over the channel. But if you take real time content, you can't do that. You can't do two things. You can't, you can't recode it because you haven't got time. You've got to get it, you've got to get it to the network immediately because um, it's a real time piece of content. Um, uh, and you, and you, you certainly can't buffer. So you can't code it twice and you can't buffer. So this means that in order to improve the quality of that content, the only thing you can think about is either improving the encoder, and a lot of work's gone into that over the years, both in pre-filtering as well as in, in the process itself, but in post-filtering, looking, looking at ways to enhance the image that results, either removing the, the coding noise or increasing the resolution of it. And certainly that links back to the AI issue, which is if you can really learn what a good picture looks like and apply that to adaptive filtering at the output, then you can improve the experience for the user. Brilliant. I think that was a long answer to a short question, but uh, uh, I hope that was helpful. Well, there's a lot of insight on that, Mike. Thanks, thanks a lot for that. Uh, moving on to another aspect of the experience. Uh, as we know, the, the amount of content which is getting created on, on, to be posted on OTT is enormous. There are about 1,600 plus hours of, uh, of only would you say exclusive content which is created on, on this particular on uh, specifically OTT platforms. So if you look into this, uh, it is very very difficult to stand out and then give a customer the content that he wants. So in this regard, recommendation I understand plays a lot of uh, role in terms of the content discoverability. So maybe Shahid, if you can throw some light on how, what kind of uh, insights and backend uh, processing and analytics goes into to recommend a particular uh, episode to a particular user and then uh, what's in store for in future. Definitely. So currently, see, I, I will just give a context currently where we are in, right? In this uh, Corona or COVID-19, as you call, we have a lot of content, you know, thousands of hours of minutes of content we have available, but the new content production has stopped. Now, when a user comes onto a platform, if we can identify the user or the universe around it, you know, what content he hasn't watched, you know, in bare terms of recommendations or users' habits or watching, you know, preferences, basis of that, you can display him a content which is readily available with you. Because fresh is something which the user hasn't watched. It's not necessary you produce a new content and then make it available for the user. So that is where AI plays a major role where you can identify based on the user habit and preferences and then display that piece of content to the user. That is one side to it. Coming in terms of analytics, right, as of now, like we are trying to get more and more traffic on our platforms and basis of you know different you know key metrics, we are trying to identify the user patterns and then trying to promote different content pieces to them again. But more or less is more around the user habits. Like you know, you have to identify the user habits and their preferences and then accordingly program your content. Okay. So so if I understand you right, what you're saying is if a user comes onto a platform at a particular point of time, maybe what is uh, thrown at him is different than maybe when he comes at a different point of time. Because maybe at the morning, he may want to just catch a glimpse of something. Evening, when his leisure time, he may want to catch up on his series. Uh, based on his earlier watching preference, uh, he's watched in romance. So you're trying to give him another recommendation on the romance side. So that's how it goes. Right. Okay. And this again from your existing catalog, you know? Because your production is not there in place. So basis of his watching habit and preferences and according to the network availability, like currently the network is quite congested. And I think most of us have known because of the, you know, guidelines have trimmed down our, you know, SD content into SD. Right, right. So, so also I understand on the same point uh, to improve click through rates per se, not only you choose which particular content should be displayed to you, but also what should be the hero image that is shown across. So maybe exactly. a particular uh, series may have a theme which is depicting horror, a theme which is depicting romance, a theme which is depicting something else. Based on my interest level, that particular uh, theme hero photograph comes in to ensure that I, I click through on it. 
exactly basically you know nowadays nowadays to you know get the first glimpse you have to have the key characters of that specific episode or show or the theme around which that episode has been built upon has to be the hero image because that is the only you know and nowadays you know, if you have a app and most of us have that you know our corozel on the top 30% of the inventory or the real estate you have on your device that is where you should display that hero image and try to attract the users and get a click through right right thanks thanks on that so moving on to another important aspect so prashant if i can just add if you don't mind a little sure, bit sure. of interactivity yeah. uh, yeah. since you also asked about the future i am uh, i'm uh, in talks with the various researchers in the area uh, so just wanted to give you some thoughts uh, one is of course the individual and what he or she watches uh, but also there is a network science element to it as to what is the peer uh, group watching because there is a lot of content consumed based on what can be discussed um, and there is a viralness to the content being able to predict the viralness of a content uh, is also another aspect uh, but i would also point out that there are uh, folks very early on who have taken out intellectual property on uh, connecting uh, bio signals to uh, recommending content so it is not as complicated today because uh, if you have a, a heart rate variability which is on most uh, wearables uh, you can link that to uh, what can of content to recommend or if it is a branching content how the branch should work because i might not want to spend the time to, uh, figuring out each branch uh, so there are lots of fun stuff happening it won't come to light for another 3 4 years uh, but it's good to know is is social media also used in the same side say for example a particular person is an influencer so maybe uh, what is shown to him uh what he talks about that that means that okay if people in this region are are now or his associates are more inclined to watch something like this is something being done on that side as well and so at uh, at yale we had worked with uh, uh, professor kristakus uh, who does superb work on network science and he was not using it for ott kind of content as much as uh, determining how to um, get a particular initiative more popular let's say but the same Uh, approach works for ott because they use social media uh, and uh, social networks and a uh, easy way to determine who is the influencer use the right word um, and hence what is if you know who is the influencer then you can use that as a proxy uh, for determining recommendations to a bunch of uh, people and then at this point also what i wanted to say is bringing in what uh, mr mike said sometime back recommendation it may not only be on the side of the content to be watched it can be even whether you need to go for a plan which is a hc plan or an st plan i had a very pleasant experience that i wanted to share on this uh, uh, this thing so i bought a new tv which is a hc tv and plugged in and uh, put on a particular streaming app on it so immediately as soon as i put on and signed in it said you are on a hc plan uh, sd plan which is a b c d so why don't you press okay on your uh, uh, this thing to upgrade to hc plan one month complimentary yeah. and i did that and it's been say two years since i have been on the hc plan that is a wonderful experience i would say and an example of how to do a upsell at a, at a very apt point of time yeah they seem to know your bank account <laughs> <laughs> or the device i use <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good proxy for your bank account <laughs> so uh, on, on the same point maybe i would i would want to open up another question on subscription because in in uh, ott what's very important is uh, subscription versus ad etc so the bunch of analytics being done to upsell cross sell to customers move up subscription and stuff so maybe uh, lokesh or manish you want to take this question on subscription and maybe both of you add add on this points on subscription and what can be done to what's being done to move it up sure uh, sure prashant so uh, before getting into the subscription i would like like to just take up the recommendation piece and i thought that uh, that's really relevant for all the otps uh, um, so yes recommendation is something which is very important for the engagement but i feel that uh, we should take a back seat and see that how we can really Uh, create that uh, recommendation for the user, and I feel that AI, which kicks in at right from the processing uh, level of the content, because it all depends on how enriched my metadata is. Enriched, 
then definitely I'll be able to give a, a better recommendation because it all uh, comes out of the metadata you are having in the system. When we talk about the metadata, there is a certain limitation in terms of how much you can put in uh, manually, right? Now, I take the example of, let's say, uh, comedy. Now, comedy also has the multiple variant, stand-up comedy, family comedy, kids comedy, adult comedy. Now, if I am not putting my metadata correctly, I may start putting only comedy, then the recommendation which is coming up uh, to the consumer may not be correct. Similarly, if I have to start putting the markers for showing the recommendation or even for that matter search, if I want to, if I'm not able to put the markers at the right time by using the right system, because putting the markers manually may not be possible. I need to use an AI system which can put the marker based on the character, based on the emotion, based on uh, various uh, key moments in the, in, the, in the sequence, right? So I should be able to pre-process the content using a sort of either manual and the combination of manual and AI systems, which are able to put either the markers or the metadata efficiently at the time of pre-processing, which I can then use for either recommendation. And on top of that, uh, I would say even more important, which is becoming now, is the personalization of, of the content or the experience for you, because it is all about experience, right? And given that, that the consumption is gradually moving towards the prime time consumption on the bigger screen from a smaller uh, me moment on the mobile devices, which is still the, the prime, uh, which is the main consumption for the consumers on, on the mobile, which is wherein I am interacting one on one with the content. The moment it moves to a big screen, prime time consumption is happening on the bigger screen. You need to create the experience based on the profiles, right? Now, you can't just watch a content on a bigger screen having a four or five of your family members sitting. So you then start creating the personal experiences by having those profiles. I think uh, these are all emulated using the metadata, enrichment of the metadata. Based on the metadata, then I'll be able to either create the experience or uh, recommendation or the personalization. So that is what I think uh, we have been working on and we are trying to create lot of personalization for the consumers inside the application besides of course the recommendation and in the same breath I would take up your uh, 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 your subscription also uh, so uh, we offer both award and s -word, uh, content right uh, while award is good which is primarily our catch-up content and some of the premium content also is available in the award but a lot of content is in the uh, in the premium segment, originals, web originals, acquired content, and uh, some of the other premium, all the sports is behind the paywall, right? So we need to first ensure that while the user is, most of the users, when they are onboarding, they onboard by uh, consuming the free content available. Free content, either it's a full catalog, full uh, show is free, or part of it is free for sampling or whatever. How and when, I should be asking the user for the subscription. That is something which is very key, right? It's not that the moment you land onto the platform, I start bombing you saying, hey, you subscribe, you subscribe, you subscribe. That's a sort of a very, uh, not a very good consumer experience. So we need to profile the consumers and ensure that I am, I'm asking him to subscribe at the right content at the right time when he's primed for and engaged enough onto my platform. And once he is engaged, how I upsell, because my content is having multiple uh, types of content. How, when I should say that, hey, you know, you have been paying on a monthly basis, month on month. Now it is time for you to upgrade to maybe a six months or a 12 months pack, because you are going to save. I, we, we saw that you are consistently, consistently paying, and this brings back to your experience of SD and HD. If a user sees that I'm paying X amount every month on month, and I'll end up paying 12x. If I upgrade to an annual plan, probably I'll end up saving 50% of the cost. That brings in the brings a wow factor wherein consumer feels that this product is for me, takes care of, of me, and it, it really values what I am spending onto the platform. And the third aspect is how do I ensure that users are not churning out when they are on my platform? So when I need to kind of profile whether the consumption pattern is there, for example, if I find that you are not consuming something, it could be because the content is not available or it could be because of the quality of service also. If I'm able to profile and understand that what sort of a quality of service I'm able to offer, it could be the last mile issue, it could be ISP specific issue, 
it could be device specific issue but if i am able to capture the uh, quality of service data and recommend or suggest a user hey you know you look like you are on a lower bandwidth you may want to shift to alternate uh, connection to have a better uh, consumer experience or whatever users are definitely going to engage and, uh, and 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 kind of consume more so subscription and that is when once they engage with your platform uh, they consume more they consume more they get a satisfaction they then uh, likely to pay on continue to pay on your platform so i think uh, there is a complete funnel which we need to manage and at each and every level we need to make sure that we are really uh, capturing the right kind of data using that data to uh, use it in a way which really brings in a better experience and convert the behavior into habit essentially when the user is landing there is a behavior uh, change which is happening so i am consuming either data on a smaller device moving to a bigger screen or i am consuming it on broadcast moving it to the digital now this behavior should convert into habit by bringing in the better consumer experience and the consumption uh, behavior on the platform a lot of info useful insight there lokesh you want to add something onto it ah uh, sure thanks uh, manish sir you have covered most part of it leaving me very less to contribute to uh, but uh, the way i see it uh, this is a mix of what you were getting uh, from earlier experience of of using a uh, family you know based television show so you, all of you and your family will sit down and watch the show because it was entertaining to everybody the, the angle of personalization which comes into picture with otts now we can selectively identify what you consume on large screen versus small screen where you consume what you would say family friendly content versus where you are open to more edgy stuff so you can identify based on location based on devices identify the time of the day day of the week all sort of these metric is available to us so these intelligence uh recommendation system pieces that we talk about they are all evolving with these newer signals we are evolving on part of how we do process any specific user data even so the mood of the day and all those factors come into picture the recent events come into picture like rishi kapoor died so we had a catalog of movies which belong to his golden era so it was rather easy to surface it so any of those uh, signals that we get okay we do demography we understand which other perspective users for which we surface this content and will get uh, you know a larger click through rate or a larger playback so that engagement metric that uh, manish sir was talking about just now that is the key factor for any subscription business if you don't have enough engagement if you are not able to add newer content if you are not able to resurface old content if you are not able to identify the taste of the user based upon when it makes sense to him or her then we will not be able to engage him or her long enough that engagement piece is a constant drive you use social as you talked about earlier to get the influencers to talk about your content you produce higher quality show then you can you know market it better all of this goes as a journey so media is all about telling you know a story we are in the business of being storytellers how best we can tell a story is by creating a great show surfacing it to right audience and then ensuring the last mile delivery is super the user should not feel that he was short charged this was not worth his money right and he or she is facing any issues uh, the rca should be quick thorough and we should be able to identifiably you know bridge that gap in that experience what manish sir was talking about is churn specifically how churn actually happens if you're giving somebody uh, the wrong content he will not be engaged if you're giving somebody bad quality on part of his tv not being able to you know play it nicely as his phone is because you he's trying to do you know a full hd sort of viewability on his tv uh, with a different isp versus his mobile phone which is doing an sd watch which is very easily available in being on a 4g network uh, half a billion people right now in india are on 4g network that gives us a huge huge opportunity it, it far surpasses the tata sky and airtel reach and that's where i see that this is a habit that is going to be much more consolidating if you are able to deliver on the premise of you know 
this is worth your money so i i hear i see a lot of uh, comments coming in on on the specific topic here where people are saying are indian audience ready to pay uh, are, uh, are will you be worried if a person is paying but still not watching it so will you go back and reach out to him and say hey you were watching uh, not paying by uh, or you were watch, not watching but paying for it uh, and kinds of things so maybe we can take some of this uh, in terms of uh, is the indian audience ready to pay uh, golden question that that keeps uh, coming again and again uh, to start off I, i would say that given the right content given the right price points and the amount of things which are available at say for example to consume ott you need a multiple things right you need right content you need right device you need the right pipeline to send it to you in terms of a good bandwidth network if all of those are available in the right price point the right uh, personalization experience why not is what might take us maybe uh, the panelists want to take a go at it i mean it's it's not breaking the bank i mean all of us are pretty pretty economical as part of buying a subscription for uh, so definitely there's a bank for buck approach that all of us are pricing our packs with uh, obviously as many sir uh, earlier talked about if we understand if user is unable to watch then how to validate that if it is our fault how to ensure that his money is not going to waste that is a very key factor and part of customer engagement and satisfaction that he is not being you know uh, taken for a ride so the trust factor is very very key for any of us to be competitive in the business the moment people believe that uh, it's not worth their money then people will not be bothered about you know next month subscription and, and isn't our population our uh, boon at, at at when it comes to this so uh, while someone else if he creates a particular content spending x amount of budget to recoup that there is a small base to charge and they needs to charge a particular amount and we with our billion plus population if everyone contributes a little bit we, the content creator and the platform all get their bank for money and there will be a lot more to share and then this particular content which is created can be reused again and again so that's that's one of the secrets also oh, definitely also, I, i mean that that is the primary reason we are all very very aggressively believing that india is a growing market and the the cost of creation versus the money that can be made over that particular asset that balancing act right now both seems a little off but in the longer run we believe that will come into picture we should be making money that's what we are doing here prashant, so prashant the, uh, sorry manish go ahead yeah. okay um, thanks koki uh, so prashant i see it actually two fold when we are talking about uh, willingness to pay and the propensity to pay right now uh, there are two parts to it one is the behavior and second is the uh, whether i am uh, i have the propensity and uh, capacity to pay what i feel that uh, uh take the example of music right um it's not that i can't pay for it but a lot of people due to high piracy people are still side loading and it is there is a behavioral shift which is started happening when people realize that it's better to uh, pay uh, for music because i can create my catalog i can create my playlist and i can consume it better so they started getting a better consumption and the experience when they started paying for the content and organizing their music so i think that behavioral shift is very important wherein users are instead of using the pirated content to start using the uh, the the uh, the premium content and start uh, willing to pay for it what we have seen that it's a journey in itself right it's not going to happen overnight what has happened now uh, it has expedited that journey wherein now users have started making the payment for the premium content it started and that's what we have seen besides all the free content consumption whatever is happening people are actually paying and consuming the premium content also and i think we need to just continue with this journey and uh, and create this behavior into habit wherein users are now paying for the content and consuming it of course what lokesh mentioned about trust factor they need to have that trust when i am making the uh, making the payment i am really going to consume that across the devices right it's not the services are going to be available for me always and i should be able to watch the content as per my convenience and again it comes back to the experience so people are going to pay for content and experience both 
if we expect users to pay for content only probably no they will continue to sideload and and kind of consume the content and that is where again i am talking about coming back to ai and ml to know your content to know your consumer to engage him give him the experience which actually uh, which actually give him not only the content but experience both across the various devices are going to be the key and that is where users will be willing to pay uh, yeah so prashant i just wanted to add that um, while you're right in terms of india is a large market and uh, uh, you know even if there is significantly la- uh, right now avod consumption which is advertisement based even uh, the percentage which is subscriber can be attractive uh, however it gets segmented also in terms of content by vernacular um and uh, so while the population is large and there is a large uh, group who can understand and uh, look up to hindi content uh, and english content but there are other content also so uh, there are there are challenges which can be solved uh, because your vernacular content or you're making your other content available for people who only understand vernacular uh is also possible both uh, from a transcription uh, kind of uh, services as well as um, various other means to make sure that uh, uh, the content which is produced uh, is uh, available uh, also the remote location problem exists uh, as soon as you go out of uh, uh, tier 1 city to tier 2 even a place like chikmagalur uh, you can't even get your whatsapp messages leave alone play a video uh so that uh, that also is a challenge in india which needs to be addressed in order for the subscription base to continue to increase uh, better people than me in uh, in the audience i'm sure that uh, they will have comments uh, if they if they agree or disagree but uh, manish lokesh uh, shahabuddin I, i think you might have been experiencing these as well in terms of remote areas and vernacular yeah So, yes. so a, a point on 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 the payment thing before i just jump on to the other thing with regard to vernacular remote area and then how do we manage on that side on the payment side of it the other challenges that we are seeing is uh, the digital payments uh, and acceptance of digital payments by the consumers at all uh, and then ability to pay through a credit card or a wallet wallets have come as a boon in that scenario and then also what we are seeing is uh combination and then newer payment models are reviving and coming up in terms of uh, operator based career based billing which which is seen in elsewhere in multiple other countries in india we are seeing that it started to happen uh also bundling of products say for example we seen three four ott products being bundled in and being offered together as one subscription to the user and then paid along with his uh, other normal subscription that he is used to so these are some things which are also trying to uh, convert users into the paid 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 uh, ecosystem as such maybe so on one of the thing i'm just seeing here is uh, on the point that gobi mentioned as well a small remote area that you go in you you may not get network as such and i'm also seeing one other question which is coming in how do we ensure that best in class video quality experience is achieved irrespective of the content that is being used uh, what kind of encoders that we use uh, that's one part of it the other part is uh, a lot of the small scale uh, cities may not have the best in class network so do we have a different strategy for them so mike maybe you can take both of these questions together and throw some light on it well look looking at the sort of the fundamentals of it the the quality of the encoder is pretty well everything uh, and essentially what the encoded stream is is a set of instructions on how to decode the picture so the decoder itself has very little control over the the quality that's achieved it's on the encoding side within the bandwidth that's available there are some things that can be done though which is in the post processing section of the decoder in terms of being able to uh, enhance the image after it's been after it's been decoded so you're basically uh looking at technologies which adaptively filter the filter the picture to replace and improve where the encoding errors uh, have occurred and indeed at the same stage possibly increase uh the resolution of the uh, of the image but uh, really it's up to the encoder in order to, do, to in order to make the choices in terms of what it can do in terms of the compression and uh, you're left with the result at the decoder 
uh, which becomes more and more complicated the worse the, the worse the image is. But certainly AI, AI technology at that stage is certainly beginning to help um, because you can apply very clever adaptive filtering, which has learned what a good picture looks like and apply that post. And that, that makes you somewhat independent of the, of the encoding quality. But uh, the ideal situation, of course, is that you've got, you know, the best quality coder you have, you can have for the, for the bandwidth. And then you can think about up, 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 uh, up, upscaling the image quality um, in resolution terms, rather than just worrying about the coding artifacts. So, so on the same line, there is one more question, Mike, if you want to just take that as well. Can AI-based scaling deionization can be performed streamlining without affecting the latency is, is a question that's coming from one of the viewers. Uh, yes, because uh, um, the, the filtering is per frame and is um, a spatial filtering per frame. So we, we, we might argue technically whether it's a millisecond or less than a millisecond or something, but effectively in in, in, in reality, compared to the end-to-end um, -end delay of the system, you can do the improvement within a tiny space of time yeah. uh, so that you I, wouldn't normally worry about. If I can add to that, um, so the challenge is doing it real time, like Mike said, and doing it at a minimum of 30 frames per second. And uh, with uh, the abilities that uh, we have uh, today at the edge, uh, uh, you, uh, you can do it real time and uh, it has been demonstrated. So, so uh, on another question which is coming up, looks like someone is really missing going to the theaters. They're asking, uh, uh, do we see a trend going forward that there'll be OTT first release of movies happening and what kind of a uh, uh, thing is in store for us? Rabudi, you want to take, take a shot at or, or uh, maybe Lokesh, one of you? Sure, I'll take this one. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense for a situation like current uh, where there is no way people can go to theaters and watch it uh, but these are very early indicators on part of how does it uh, transpires into uh, what you'd say monetization strategies i mean uh, movie production is much much expensive business than producing an original show uh, the amount of money that goes into a you know high quality movie a period drama or you know something which is set up uh, in some remote location as an action movie or something like that uh, it costs a lot how do you basically monetize on basis of that is very difficult to answer there has been uh, some great uh, experiments like trolls which basically made enough uh, buck but i am not very sure every movie that goes through a digital premiere route is going to basically have the same impact. And it's actually very difficult to uh, quantifiably measure the financial success of any of these properties directly. Uh, there's a, so for a movie, it's very simple. It's, it's essentially first two weeks where you basically make 95 or 97 percentage of your overall money. The rest of it is pretty much very small incremental updates on week on week basis of business. Uh, but that's money in the bank that's directly correlating to that particular movie. For an OTT platform, it would, for, for a subscriber based OTT platform, it's a very difficult task. A TWOT definitely will make most sense in that scenario because then you can directly attribute and correlate, okay, this movie actually made this much money. Right. So, so a, a related uh, question on that side, now with a lot of analytics available, the, like we understood, there are two kinds of things that you look into, 360 of a customer, 360 of the content itself by uh, breaking it up into multiple metadata like Manish was explaining. Uh, by doing all of this, is some kind of analytics being done for uh, curating content as well? Is, is the technology dictating what is to be procured, what is to be uh, produced, etc.? So any, any thoughts on that side? Oh, definitely. Definitely. We, under, we are getting much more insightful about what content works with what segment of people, how we create bigger segments by overlapping multiple factors together would make uh, a show or a movie which will have wider audience and this is this is now getting you know backed by technology but this is traditionally being the 
approach of creating content how do you create a family friendly show which is clean and is fun is because you understand this for uh, you know a living room experience the entire family needs to sit down and enjoy it so you are basically creating wider audience base for yourself if you are creating a content that can be consumed with family right right very true so in fact that can be one of the future revenue streams also i can hope that as you collect more and more and more into data of people watching and the viewership habits you can more and more predict what will sell and what will not sell so producer before going putting its money on the bank he'll come and ask one of you guys uh, you know what whom should i take as the hero what kind of story should i take if i'm putting this many crores as my budget lokesh will say me <laughs> that happens now itself i mean what you're talking about is pretty much what happens today if you take a salman khan uh, starer which is action driven having really amazing action sequences i mean it's sure to get enough crowd uh, in the theater so yeah. just to add uh, to this uh, you see there are a lot of uh, decision making going when you might have seen there are multiple seasons of a content of a show is coming right now when to decide uh, uh, what to i mean uh, what all shows are to be uh, season based and when the season should be launched there are a lot of uh, uh, data uh, which is supporting that right i should create the when it should be created and when it should be launched it should be based on really the facts on the data depending on what sort of a subscription churn and uh, uh, consumption is happening so that my timing is right if you are launching let's say you have 100000 users and they are consuming a type of show and most of them on a annual plan and you launched another season on uh, let's say 6th month i mean they are going to consume in the next 6 months right whereas you should be launching it on 13th month or on 12th month so they are they are likely to renew the subscription because these are all the users who are engaged to that particular show so there is a lot of data which uh, anyways in the ott space and the traditional media also being used when the content is produced it's uh, that's uh, okay. so, so if i understand right what i what i also heard from few people is it's just not you became a paid subscriber from being a paywall subscriber what route did you take did you click on a maybe an icon which is a sports uh, a property and come in and become a member or did you click on a series which is an english series or a desi a kind of a series which is basically giving you a tag on what you are looking for and basically as soon as that is getting over you are looking at how do you replenish something in terms of content to keep this guy on that's right so so another uh, question that comes in maybe uh, to the uh, panelists here is uh, how is audience measurement done in uh, ott and then how how reliable is it and how how are people using it maybe shabudin you want to take this sure basically there are like quite quite a few key factors like number of you know shows he has won video minutes he has consumed and type of genre he is consuming based on that you know we try to segment the audience and basis of which we try to then you know display or program content for specific audience right so there is there is another question which is uh, coming in here saying that are there any regulations for ott in india and how is it affecting you in 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 your day to day operations you want to take any one of them want to take this question we have we have worked uh, with other partners to create what you would say proactively uh, more family friendly content uh, we believe that this uh, ott premium experience is something that you're going to enjoy in your living rooms uh profanity nudity all these things are uh, if presented towards uh, with a sense of art it makes a little sense but uh, just for the sake of it it does not make sense to me and hence uh, you know we have we have tried very proactively to be on the right side of things right uh to, to add on to this uh, while the government has not maybe come up and then said you know what you follow these these very strict guidelines to go in on this side uh the the federation of all the ott players are coming together and putting in a self governance kind of a law 
to say that before someone comes and says, you know what, you don't go out of your house any point of time for COVID. You just make a rule which says, you know what, I'll go out of my house only from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then later on during the period, I'll be staying inside my house. So similar to that, there is some bit of self-regulation which is happening on this side to make, make things better. So uh, another question uh, on, on, on this uh, side of it is there is some bit of activity in this entire ecosystem which is manual uh, and it takes a lot of time and effort and is error prone. Uh, is there some kind of technology which are being used to make this better uh, in terms of error free and use of lesser time per se? Maybe some examples on this side would help. Anyone who want to take this? So question? let me uh, go first, uh, Prashant. Uh, so a few things. Uh, one of the areas where there's a lot of uh, manual work is content creation. As an example, if it is animation uh, work, uh, VFX work, uh, significant amount of uh, manual uh, effort is uh, required. And um, there is increasing amount of automation uh, coming in, uh, in uh, uh, as we uh, go along. It, uh, some of it is uh, technologies other than AI, but uh, recently uh, AI has uh, played a role. Um, so today you will find many examples where you can take up one picture and use uh, a substitute actor who is not well known but can provide facial movements and make that uh, picture um, act uh, so you can have a person who is no longer alive or you can have an animation or you can have an animal. Uh, so these are areas where you are seeing a lot of automation uh, coming into uh, play. Uh, this was just an uh, example. Uh, the other areas would be things like uh, um, taking old content and uh, making it, uh, um, let's say you're taking interlaced uh, uh, content uh, of low resolution and you want to make it progressive and high resolution. Uh, it used to be done manually, a lot of color, color correction and various other tools uh, being used. Uh, today you can uh, use AI definitely uh, to go from a particular quality to a current quality. Just wanted to give you two examples to get it started. Prashant, just to add, uh, presently what, uh, 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 when I was talking about the cue points, so there are uh, two uh, big use cases which probably would be required. Is One is the skip introduction. So when you are in the binge watch, you definitely would not like to get into the introduction again and again. Those two point um, uh, tagging of the, in, the skipping of uh, when to uh, skip the introduction and similarly, the skip uh, credit right in the binge watch you definitely would not like to see that credit which comes at the end of the uh, show or the movie that is the one use case the second is the creation of the clips or especially in the sports where in four and six and the key moments and the uh, and creation of the clips and posting it onto the various platform or even onto your platform these are all can be automated because these are all really required to be done in the real time you can't uh, do it post uh, uh, match getting over and things like that. So um, these are all uh, some of the things which are uh, happening to automated system, which can really help and expedite the overall process, which uh, least amount of uh, error because it's all based on some learning. And once it is there, you can kind of keep on doing it. Okay. Are, are uh, subtitles to the, uh, what do you say, the voice also one, one example of something similar? Uh, and maybe also uh, grading user, uh, what do you say, recommendation, whether it's AI, uh, is, whether it's uh, U rated or it's uh, adult rated based on maybe a blood splash which is coming on the screen or uh, a lot of abusive language which automatically AI picks up and recommends to a particular user or not recommend. See, from a technology standpoint, Prashant, uh, the ability to transcribe is very much there. And the um, uh, value is when you can do it with vernacular language. Uh, but translate is a difficult thing because there is a cultural element to it. Uh, so let's say that we want to translate Hindi to English. Uh, that is very difficult uh, because uh, you can uh, see even in your uh, Google translates or otherwise that uh, uh, you don't get the uh, cultural context at all. And in a movie where there are songs and there are, um, you know, Gali's uh, and there is local nuances uh, you'll just not get 
it right. So transcription is possible. Translation will take some more time to automate. Uh, but even transcript. So there are. Th this will also help. Where instead of translating by listening to the uh, video. you have a transcription and somebody can be a good person can be used for translation without having to sit in front of the video and go through and that itself saves a lot of uh, time in fact uh, right apt on this i saw a particular image yesterday which said dosa batter was translated by google to say dosa ballebars <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying even even uh, if you put it uh, in language like hindi hindi has so many dialects and people speaking in western yes. up would be very different from how we speak in rajasthan it's, it's as simple as that when you try to understand and transcribe it but i don't think anybody is able to do it 100% it's any way uh, you know around 80% accuracy you have to put a, a little bit of manual effort to identifiably say how to improve on that the models are improving but i do not believe uh, 100% transcription or 100% accurate translation is happening any time soon yeah. uh, other example for um, you know the manual labor now shifted to ai was uh, identifying good key frames while you are trying to scrub through uh, a video earlier we used to basically do you know create screenshots and identify markers and put it while you are trying to see what is happening now ai has enabled that pretty much you don't have to do anything yeah yeah uh, i see one other question which may come up on time here is uh, is the application of ai and ml only limited to recommendation in thumb lanes there are a bunch of things i know maybe uh, anyone want to uh, summarize a bunch of things that we are doing through ai and ml and not just uh, recommendation in thumb lanes in this uh, context i know that i have uh, taken uh, some time if anybody else wants to do it happy otherwise i'll happy i'll happily do it so maybe uh, anyone want to give it a go or uh, hope you can you can take it okay so um, uh, we discussed it early on in the uh, discussion uh, today there is a lot ai can do but i want to caveat that ai is a tool and shouldn't be looked upon as a uh, silver bullet um, but it's a very important tool that uh, we should uh, leverage uh, the ability for it to contribute is in um, even from creativity which includes uh, the journey of the story uh, to making uh, the content more user friendly uh, to making sure that the quality of the uh, Uh, content is the absolute uh, best so right from zero buffering increasing resolution removing delay improving dynamic range removing noise removing artifacts uh, to recommendation engines uh, video audio x rays um, you know being able to participate in a, uh, a show so i can use my face and uh, paste it over the hero's face and uh, this is the future though not right now um but it's very much uh, there and then uh, in terms of creativity plot generation story generation short recommendation action following ball following news compilers democratizing vfx modernizing content and generating content um i know there is much more um but really today where we are is that we can take your uh, content we talked about sd uh as the uh, as a reaction to the present situation we do not have to view in hd you can transmit in hd but we we'll, can still view in hd that we can do today so so in 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 very uh, precise summary what gopi has put across is there are lot more uses than just recommendation and uh, hero shot when it comes to ai and ml as such whether it is content creation at one part of it the other one is uh, when you get to consumption of it the device that you are using based on the device that you are using automatically scaling up and scaling down in the kind of experience that you get uh, picking off where you left you stop on one device you pick it up in another device that's also a bunch of technology which is helping you make happen seamlessly uh, as as you go the language barriers Uh, when you look into it the entire menu may be customized to you in your localized language may not be the content itself but at this point of time but the language uh, of the application itself is uh, customized to your needs the interest based recommendation is always there hdst like like how gopi mentioned 
then then basically uh, your interactive content uh, the content it's a, there, there are certain shows where you can choose the outcome you want to have a happy outcome or you want to kill the uh, heroine in the end as such so you, it's in your hand the producer is and the director is no longer taking those decision whatever appeals to you you can watch that accordingly so these are some basic examples of how how things are going moving in this direction so as i see the clock is hitting uh, 5 3 any any closing coming from anyone then maybe we can just uh, uh, close up on a wind up on this one any any closing comments i'll just start to the last one uh, we are progressively moving towards the cost optimization ua using ai and ml techniques uh, when do we need uh, more servers how do you optimize your cdn cost all of these are now based upon signals that we process and have predictive analysis at hand do we need to scale up for a weekend seems straight forward but for, with how much factor very interesting yeah how do you basically identify the right cdn partners uh, that is also something that we are putting in models and trying to understand better uh, because you know if a partner a delivers a 99% uh, versus a partner that serves for 100% that is that 1% difference Uh, worth 1.5x money. So, so on a on a conclusive note, if I'm putting on my imaginative hat to slightly hide my lockdown haircut as well, uh, so what what we see here is uh, maybe in the future, uh, as you open an app and then start pressing to view a particular uh, show of your choice, maybe your lights will dim as is, your blinds will come down. uh automatically your app will place an order for a coke and a, a popcorn by from your nearest vendor uh it will automatically post inviting a few friends to watch along with you and that may be as as small as your or as big as your imagination can go go by so that's that's what i would like to say and conclude and hand it back to kyathi in this scenario that's 1984 all in one <laughs> we don't know what really to live in that world where somebody else decides what should happen <laughs> other than popcorn you can always give me uh, popcorn is fine i love that idea yeah. <laughs> so i think we are all being decided it says do you want to order a pop popcorn along with it you just say yes to alexa and then it will do it for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you mr rao and uh, all our panelists thank you for your time and uh, i could see that by the end we were becoming really imaginative on what uh artificial intelligence can do to us in this quarantine but thank you so much for your valuable time i think i've taken some uh, highlight points from this discussion which makes me really happy and excited that some day i can be the face of the heroine and watch the movie as i would imagine otherwise <laughs> but thank you so much gentlemen for your time uh to all of you who are watching us uh, you can rewatch this because the live will be available on our facebook page for you to rewatch it as well you can hashtag e4m webinar and uh, you know tell us your comments your views and you can tweet to us using our tag e4m tweets i would once again like to thank all of you gentlemen for spending this time and discussing this really interesting topic because all of us are all the time on our ott platform so we want to know what is new that is happening there so before moving forward and concluding this webinar i would like to tell all of you that myland foundry has partnered with us to organize this webinar myland is a deep tech company and they are launching a product called Fovio Stream which deploys artificial intelligence on users mobile devices to enable streaming at disruptive costs and even in very low networks so here is a short video to demonstrate and highlight their innovation let's take a look
So once again, thank you everybody for watching this e-webinar and thank you once again to our session chair and our panelists for your valuable time. Stay tuned to Exchange for Media page. We'll be coming up with more interesting contents and webinars and discussions that will definitely enrich your lives while we are here in lockdown at home. So thank you very much. I'm Khyati Kawai, who's signing off. We'll see you again.